Hi, I'm Missy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter, from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. This week, we are going to talk about an alternative method to create circle blocks in your quilts. So we are going to talk about inset circles. Remember that you can find all of the instructions and the details of what we are working on today on our blog. So go ahead and check the link at the bottom of the video and that will take you to our blog. While you're there, make sure to check out our shop and look for your next modern quilt pattern. So there are a couple of things that you're going to need to complete your inset circle. So one of those things is freezer paper. And you just need to have your freezer paper that's a little bit bigger than the circle itself. And that's going to just kind of help stabilize things as you're working on getting that circle ready. The other thing that you're going to need is something to cut your circles. So if you're working on a quilt that comes with templates, you can use those templates. You can also, depending on the size of the circles that you want, there are different circle cutters out there that you can get. So this one has, um, one side does up to the half inch, one, and the other side does just to the regular inch. So you can cut that, fold your fabric in half for in quarters and, and get that curve that you need. Another thing that you can do is use cups or bowls or whatever you've got around the house to trace your circles on and you can use it that way as well. So we have our background fabrics here and our freezer paper. So the first thing that I need to do is trace, the, make sure that we've got a circle on that freezer paper as well. So we're gonna show you how we do that. So for our freezer paper, we're going to take that and we're gonna fold it into fourths. Cause so I'm gonna go ahead and use this circle cutter to help mark out where that circle needs to be. Don't worry about being exact on the edges. We will be more exact when we actually put it on the fabric. But for this, we've got a circle that is about five inches in diameter. So we want to cut our template on here a little bit smaller than the circle. So we're going to cut this one at four and a half inches. Okay, so the next step for this is we're going to take our fabric and again, I'm going to fold it in force and give it a crease. That's gonna help us line things up to make sure it's centered. So just kind of give it a nice big crease so you can see where you're going. I don't wanna fold it into fourths because sometimes that can mess it up just a little bit. I'm gonna fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Okay, and that's going to give us our center so we can line our circle center up. Make sure the folds are matching up. Oh, actually, I'm gonna do it this way because that is how I cut my fabric so it would fit. You don't need to cut it so that it fits the entire width, the entire size of the background fabric, but I did. Okay, so then we're going to take this to the iron and we're going to iron the freezer paper onto our background fabric and making sure that those stay lined up so that we've got a little bit of stabilization as we're working on that inset seam. With, yes, if you're using a print, you wanna make sure that this is on the wrong side of the fabric. So we're using a solid, so it doesn't really matter, but um, prints, you wanna make sure that you're doing it that way. Okay, now that we've got our freezer paper ironed to it, um, one thing, if you've never used freezer paper with quilting, you will want to make sure there is a shiny side and a dull side. I do all of my marking on the dull side and you're going to iron on the shiny side to the fabric itself. So now that we have our circle, this is what is going to end up being our sew line is right there along that edge. So we are going to need to trim out some of this inside fabric. So when we're trimming this out, we wanna make sure that we're leaving our quarter of an inch seam all the way around, and then we're going to trim that up. 
So you can go ahead and if you want to fold that in half, make sure that you're using your fingers to line things up. It doesn't have to be an exact quarter of an inch seam, but try and make sure that you've got at least a quarter of an inch seam in there. Okay, so this is where our circle is going to show through. Now before we can go and actually sew, we need to clip these so that they're going to fold over for us. So clip them up to that sew line. That's really what this freezer paper is here for, is to give us that sew line. So we can make sure that we're not going too far over. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this back to the iron and we're going to fold all of these over onto the back of the freezer paper and we're going to press them down. This, um, if you've got some starch or even just some water, something to help that just get nice and flat is always helpful. Now that everything is nice and flat, we can go ahead and add our circle and we're going to attach that all the way around here with just some washable glue. So this is just an Elmer school glue that's washable. You can use um, a fabric glue or whatever, but um, just make sure that it's something that's washable. You don't really want something that's permanent because we want to be able to have this still nice and soft after we finish that quilt and throw it in the wash. Because this is really just to hold it in place while we sew. Just a little dab of glue on all of these. This method is nice because your actual circle, if you didn't quite get it to be a perfect circle, that's okay. As long as this circle is your perfect circle, it will kind of make up for it for you. Press that down. Make sure it's good and stuck. I think I got glue on my fingers. And now we're going to go ahead and take the freezer paper off. So this freezer paper, you can use this exact same template for multiple blocks. You can reuse it. Um, say we've reused it five, six times um, before you have to get a new one. So when you're taking it off, just make sure that you're being careful as you're pulling it off the center of this circle. So we wanna make sure that we're not ungluing or pulling our glue out of where we're, we've got those stuck together. See, and look what I just did. You wanna be careful that you don't do that. Pull this off because this was ironed nice. We can go ahead and just it'll lay back down for us. Okay, now we're going to go over to our sewing machine and this is going to be our sew line. We are going to fold our fabric over. So we've got our circle on the top, fold this up and we are going to sew right around that crease, that sew line that we have put into the fabric based on ironing these pieces back. And then that's gonna give us our nice perfect circle. So go ahead and go nice and slow. If it's helpful, you can make sure that your needle is down. So every time you stop and pivot that, your needle is in the fabric.
And you're just going to pick the, your foot up every once in a while and just kind of pivot that around. Just kind of fold that top fabric over so that you're staying right there on that line. And make sure when your circle is a little bit bigger on this end, you don't want to use that as your quarter of an inch. You want to make sure that you are following along that creased line because that's going to end up giving you the, the size and the shape of circle that you need for the, the design. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a back stitch since how this is the full circle. So now we have our finished circles. This is a really good way to add circles into your quilts without having to do either applique or breaking up those circles and doing them using Drunker's Path Blocks. So at this point, you can actually turn your, your fabric over. You can go ahead and trim that extra fabric that we have around this circle. If you would like to, you don't have to, but if you've got anything that's ghosting through, you might want to trim that off. And you go forget that you can find all of the instructions and everything that we've gone over today in our blog. So go ahead and click on the link below the video. It'll take you to the blog post. And while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop and you can find really great inspiration and the ideas for your next modern quilt. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see what we're doing and go ahead and click on the bell of this video and it will remind you to, when we post a new video, you can check those out and we will see you next week.